Hi, I'm Jude from HeadFi.org. On this episode of HeadFi TV, we're going to talk about something that we are so super pumped about. It is our first Can Jam ever in Asia, and it is long overdue, so we're so excited about this. Um, we're going to be doing Can Jam Singapore February 20th and 21st at the Pan Pacific Singapore in Marina Square. And we're so pumped about this because Singapore is such a vibrant, exciting, important market for personal audio. One of the most exciting markets in the entire world. And in fact, no city in the world that I'm aware of that I can recall sends more traffic to headfi.org than Singapore. So it is such an important place. We should have probably done a can jam there sooner, but we're just happy to be doing it now. Thrilled to be doing it now. So in this episode of HeadFi TV, we're going to give you some examples of what you'll be able to listen to to experience at CanJam Singapore. You're looking at this table, and believe it or not, this isn't even close to everything that we'll go over. So make sure to stay tuned and see what you can experience, hear, listen to, what's coming new at CanJam Singapore 2016. Sennheiser will be joining us at Can Jam Singapore as both an exhibitor and one of the event sponsors. So Sennheiser, thank you for your support of the event. Actually, Sennheiser is now exhibited, I think, at every single Can Jam we've ever done, so that's pretty cool. Well, anyway, at the Sennheiser exhibit at Can Jam Singapore, you'll probably be able to hear a lot more than what you're looking at here on these tables. But I wanted to focus on these two new models or two of Sennheiser's latest models. Let's start with this one. This is the Sennheiser HD 630 VB. And even though it's new, I think a lot of people find it to be a bit mysterious, a bit enigmatic, because they look at it, the retro design, all the controls, they're not sure what to make of it. But it's actually a very easy headphone to understand. VB stands for variable bass. There is a variable bass adjustment control on the outside of the right ear cup, and it leaves the mids alone and affects only the bass, which I really, really like. So when you're on the go, I like having, especially on the go, that versatility with respect to being able to adjust and shift its tonal balance. That is a very cool feature. And it's actually designed to be used with mobile devices, so it's efficient enough to be used with mobile devices and has really nice fidelity for that purpose. It's actually a very good closed headphone and it isolates well, by the way. So the controls you see are actually to be used with a mobile device. So track advance, volume up, down, you know, all the controls for mobile device. And what's nice is it has a switch for iOS and Android to help you maximize compatibility and functionality of these controls depending on which, which platform you're on. I actually use both Android and iOS, so I really appreciate it. So in a nutshell, what the HD 630 VB is, is a very good closed headphone, full-size closed headphone, with really cool functionality, and if you're shopping for something in that category for, say, sub-1,000 bucks, you really should consider the HD630 VB. The Sennheiser headphone that's likely to attract the longest lines is going to be this. This is the Sennheiser HD800S. A lot of people want to hear it. It is an update of a classic, an update of the Sennheiser HD800. And what they've done is Sennheiser's taken the acoustic absorber technology from their flagship Sennheiser IE800 in-ear monitor and adapted it for use in the Sennheiser HD800 to make subtle changes to it, to refinements as far as I'm concerned. They smooth out the top end a bit. And they also uh, extend out the bass a little bit, give it a little more fullness down low. Subtle changes, but that together make a bigger change than I would have expected. And it works really, really well. I already felt the Sennheiser HD800 was the finest moving coil dynamic headphone ever created. This is that headphone refined. And I've suffered no penalty in terms of imaging with the HD800S or in terms of resolution. It's just a better headphone now for me and for my tastes, and I think a lot of people are going to agree. That's why a lot of people are likely to wait in line to hear it. Make sure you go to the Sennheiser exhibit to listen to the Sennheiser HD800S. Now, this is, in my opinion, the finest moving coil dynamic headphone ever made. I love people and companies in this industry with passion and stick to -itiveness. Antonio Meza and his team at Meza Headphones certainly fit that description. In the past year, I've seen Meza at IFA in Berlin, CES in Las Vegas, and I know they'll also be at CanJam Singapore and CanJam SoCal too. They've successfully executed and delivered on a crowdfunding campaign, and they seem to finally have a big hit on their hands with their new Meza 99 Classics. Now, I really dig this headphone. It's beautiful to look at, the construction quality is superb, and most importantly, the sound is very impressive. I'd seen the 99 Classics in photos first, but was surprised to find out how robust and attractive they were when I first handled it in Berlin. Then I listened to it. The 99 Classics, they have some bass emphasis with rich detailed mids and smooth treble. A wonderful balance for a closed headphone that actually isolates pretty well. Now it looks like nothing else on the market, and again, its build quality is superb, and everything on it is user serviceable. Now, 
The price of the Mezza 99 Classics is only $309, which makes these, in my opinion, a fantastic deal. Now make sure to stop by the Mezza Headphones exhibit at CanJam to check out the 99 Classics for yourself. Stax, maker of some of the best sounding headphones this world has ever heard, all of them electrostatic. They're coming from Japan to join us at CanJam. While I haven't spoken with Stax about what they're bringing to CanJam, I did recently see them at CES, so I think I can venture some guesses about what we'll be seeing at their CanJam exhibit. At CES, Stax was showing a new compact desktop DAC electrostatic amp combo called the Stax SRM212. With its retro-looking analog meter on the front panel, the SRM212 is a gorgeous little thing, and I'd love to hear it and learn more about it. I also expect Stax will bring their new SR Lambda headphone models. The two new models are the Stax SRL500, which is priced at around $700, and the new flagship of their Lambda line, the Stax SRL700, which draws on diaphragm technology from their flagship SR009. I have the SRL700 here and have been enjoying it immensely from the Stax SRM007T2, which I also expect you'll be able to hear at CanJam. I actually can't wait to try the SRL700 with the Frank Cooter Custom 845 tube electrostatic amp that should be arriving here any day now along with my SR009. Now speaking of the flagship SR009, I expect Stax will also have that to listen to at CanJam along with the Stax SR007 Mark II. Now this here is an old SR007 Mark I, but they do look kind of similar. Stax also makes electrostatic in-ear headphones. This is their most portable, most affordable system, the Stax SRS002, which includes the SR002 ear speakers and the SRM002 amp. It's a wonderful little system and an affordable way to start getting into electrostats. So join us at CanJam and be sure to check out the Stax exhibit for some world-class electrostatic sound. SLT Technologies will be exhibiting at CanJam Singapore and you're looking at just a few examples of what you'll be able to listen to at their exhibit because they'll be representing Mr. Speakers, Shit Audio, and Oppo. Now I want to start with Mr. Speakers because there's a big Mr. Speakers announcement that's timed with CanJam Singapore. Right about the time you're watching this video, Mr. Speakers will start shipping version 1.1, a new version of the Ether C and the Ether, their flagship headphones. Now what version 1.1 does, it improves time domain performance. It tightens up, makes faster essentially, the impulse response of both headphones. The other big change that it has sonically is that it smooths the treble. I don't mean rolling off the treble, actually it doesn't roll it off at all, but it smooths the peaks even further, making the treble performance even more linear than it already is. Now here's the good news, there's no price increase. So if you're ordering the Ether or Ether C right about the time this video comes out, you'll get the new version 1.1. Now if you're an existing Ether C or Ether owner and you're thinking, oh no, I've got to pay for an upgrade. You're right, you will have to pay for an upgrade. Then you're thinking, oh no, I'm gonna have to send it in and get it upgraded, what a pain. No, you won't. For this update, you'll be able to do it yourself and here's another piece of good news, it's only $10 plus shipping. So the kit to update your Ether C or Ether fully to version 1.1 is only $10 plus shipping and it's easy to install even if you're ham-fisted like me. I know what it takes to do it because I've seen the kit. It's really easy to do. So if I can do it, you can do it. And again, only $10 plus shipping. No price increase, $10 plus shipping if you're an existing owner. I think that's pretty cool news. And you'll be able to hear it for the first time at CanJam Singapore. SLT Technologies will also have shit audio products at their exhibit. We don't have the entire shit lineup here, um, just due to lack of space. But we do have this lovely little rig, the Magni 2 Uber Modi 2 Uber combo. Super affordable, high performance for the money. What a wonderful little system this is. If you needed something this compact for your desk and something affordable, definitely check out this little rig at the SLT Technologies exhibit. But I know a lot of you want to also hear their higher end stuff. And you should expect to see that there, the Shit Ragnarok, their flagship uh, amp. Um, also the Yggdrasil, their flagship multi-bit DAC. Uh, it's one of my reference DACs. Um, also the Gunier multi-bit and the Bifrost multi-bit. Frankly, I think they will have the entire shit line up there. So you're in luck if you're looking for shit audio at CanJam Singapore. You'll also be able to hear Oppo's products at SLT Technologies exhibit at CanJam Singapore. Uh, we have here the PM1, a lovely, smooth sounding planar magnetic headphone. It's their current flagship, a lovely headphone. Uh, I think a lot of you are probably familiar with it, of course, because it's been out a little while now. And this is their portable, closed, planar magnetic Oppo PM3. This is a killer deal headphone. Uh, it's just rare, it's a rare breed, a closed portable planar magnetic headphone. Again, a lot of you might be familiar with it, but if you haven't heard it yet, definitely give it a listen at SLT Technologies Exhibit. This is the Oppo HA1. That's their flagship desktop DAC amp combo with balanced output, 
Really lovely DAC amp combo, very thorough, even has wireless technology. You can run it Bluetooth as well. Um, there's a little Bluetooth antenna back here, not sure if you can see it. And then there is the Oppo HA2. I had it in my pocket. This is their portable uh, DAC amp combo. It is MFI certified. By the way, so is the HA1, so you can plug your iOS devices directly into it, and it will DAC, digital analog convert, straight out of an uh, iOS device with either the HA2 or the HA1. So make sure to check out Oppo at the SLT Technologies exhibit. I have a feeling one of the most popular exhibits at the event will be Hi-Fi Man's. They've just been on a roll the last couple of years, releasing some killer headphones, perhaps most killer among them, the Hi-Fi Man HE1000. This is their flagship planar magnetic headphone, and it is spectacular. It is probably, certainly one of my favorite, maybe my favorite non-electrostatic headphone ever. There's just something about it that's magical, and a lot of that is its base. Now, independent of price, independent of type of headphone, electrostatic, dynamic, planar magnetic, whatever, the base on the HE1000 is perhaps the best I've ever heard from a headphone. It's probably owing in part to the giant diaphragm, but it's like putting your head in the acoustic. The waves of bass just hit you, yet it's accurate and tight bass. And again, I love what it's doing throughout its frequency range, but man, that bass is just something else. Anyway, a lot of you are probably familiar with the HE1000 because it's been talked about for several months now on HeadFi. But make sure to listen to it if you haven't heard it, or even if you have, at CanJam Singapore. Now this headphone is a newer Hi-Fi Man headphone, one of the newest actually. This is the Hi-Fi Man Edition X. A lot of people are curious about this one, so get ready to queue up to listen to it. Um, what it is, I, I would describe it as a headphone that you would look at if you want some of the magic of the HE1000, but you don't want to stretch your budget to the HE1000. You want some of the magic of the HE1000, but you want to use it with a portable device or even directly out of your phone. Edition X, that's when you'd look at it. Phenomenal headphone, one of the best headphones I've heard directly out of my iPhone. Maybe, maybe the best, maybe one, certainly one of the best. Remarkable. Again, doesn't quite get to HE1000 levels of resolution, of impact, of transparency, but it has some of those nuances that make the HE1000 what it is. Right out of my iPhone, it's spectacular. Out of the AK380, even better. And the Edition X will be at CanJam Singapore. Make sure to stop at Hi-Fi Man's exhibit to listen to it. Now, if you've noticed this headphone while I've been talking about these two headphones, you might have thought I had another HE1000 up here on the tables. And I can see why you'd think that. It looks a lot like one. But it is most definitely not another HE1000. In fact, it's an electrostatic headphone from Hi-Fi Man. It's a prototype, and it's called the Shangri-La. Now, we've been waiting for an electrostatic headphone from Hi-Fi Man for quite some time now. They made one many years ago. It's been a long time in coming, a long time in development, and this is it. And this is an incredible sounding headphone. This is a prototype. I want to emphasize that. I don't know what the final is going to look like. I don't even know what the price is going to be. Right now, it comes with a proprietary plug that only works with a companion amp. This monstrous amp was simply too heavy to put up here. I wish I could show you. So we'll show you pictures. And it has four 300B tubes, four 12AU7s, and it's just a ginormous amplifier. But I believe they're going to make it with a Stax plug when they finally release it. I don't know what the plans, if any, are for the amp. So when I find out, I'll let you know. But what I will tell you is of all the headphones we've ever had come through here, regardless of type, this is the best sounding headphone that has ever been inside these walls. Now, I want to make clear we've never had an Orpheus inside these walls. Not the old one, not the new one. So I haven't done that comparison. But we've got just about everything else you can imagine here, and we've had just about everything you can imagine come through here other than the Orpheuses, and this is the best of everything we've heard so far. And again, it's a prototype, and it's remarkable. So if you've been paying attention to the CES 2016 coverage, uh, you may have seen mention of the Hi-Fi Man Shangri-La. Most of the reviews were like gushing, like people were going nuts about it. I understand why. I heard it there. I was one of the ones that was gushing. Now it's here, and I can't believe what I'm hearing every day while it's here. And I'm going to enjoy every minute of it that I can while it's here. And you should line up to hear it at CanJam Singapore because it's incredible. So it's the Hi-Fi Man Shangri-La prototype. It will be at CanJam Singapore. Listen to it if you can. Don't know how long the lines will be. Don't know if everybody will want to hear it. We'll be able to hear it. It's only a two-day event, and we could have some long lines for it. But listen to it if you can. That's the Hi-Fi Man Shangri-La prototype, and it is the best headphone that's ever been in HeadFi HQ.
John Franks and his team at Court Electronics have had a very busy, very successful couple of years. Most of you are probably familiar with the Cord Hugo, the portable DAC amp combo that redefined the high end of the premium portable DAC amp market. For a long time, Cord was selling Hugos faster than they could make them, even though they were originally priced at $2,500. Now, since then, they've released the Cord Hugo TT, the higher end desktop counterpart to the Hugo that served as my reference DAC amp combo since its release, and the Too Cute desktop DAC. It's a relatively affordable desktop DAC by Cord standards. Now, of course, as many of you know, late last year, Cord introduced the new Cord Mojo. I love the Cord Mojo. It's actually replaced the Cord Hugo as my reference portable DAC amp. Why? Well, it's obviously smaller, it can be charged via USB, and to me the Mojo sounds better than the Hugo. I find the Mojo to present with a richer, smoother tone than Hugo, and in terms of self-noise, it is, to my ears, even quieter and better suited for use with sensitive in-ear monitors than the Hugo, and yet it can still drive bigger headphones pretty stoutly with up to 720 milliwatts of output. Now, on top of my subjective impressions, the Mojo also measures better than any portable DAC I've measured so far, and better than many good desktop DACs. What's even more amazing, the Mojo is only $599, and Cord is saying they'll be releasing accessories for the Mojo in the future that will further extend its functionality. If you haven't yet heard Mojo, look for Cord at CanJam and give it a serious listen. Now, as strong as their assault is on the state-of-the-art and portable DACs with the Mojo, Cord's latest flagship DAC, the Cord Dave, is doing the same in the cost-no-object DAC market. The Cord Dave is easily the best DAC amp all-in-one I've yet heard. With most of the headphones I've used with it, it sets the high bar for all-in-one DAC amps when directly driving headphones like the Sennheiser HD800S, Hi-Fi Man HE1000, Mr. Speaker's Ether, and several others. It's also a state-of-the-art, cost-no-object pure DAC, that is, purely as a source component. Its ability to extract inner detail and to convey a recording's acoustic, the imaging, if there's a better DAC, I've not yet heard it. Rob Watts, the engineer behind Cord's products, who many of you know from his posts on the Head5 forums, Rob said that when he was developing Dave, he had to buy Audio Precision's flagship audio analyzer, the Audio Precision APX 555, which is the quietest audio analyzer in the world right now. He had to do that just to be able to get the full measure of the Dave. Now, we happen to also have an Audio Precision APX 555 at HeadFi HQ, and our own measurements of the Dave make clear to me why Rob needed the APX 555. The Dave's harmonic distortion measurements, for example, are easily the lowest of any DAC I've yet measured. As you can see on this table here, at full scale, distortion from the Dave is in nanovolts out to the 10th harmonic. The Dave is so far the only DAC I've measured that has achieved that. Its intermodulation distortion is also the lowest I've yet measured. Now in its pure DAC mode, I've used Dave as the DAC for the Hi-Fi Man Shangri-La prototype, and that system is just otherworldly. I've also used the DAC as a DAC in front of the electrostatic Shure KSE 1500, and the resolution combined with the isolation provided by the KSE 1500, it is simply insane. Now, if you can't or won't stretch your budget for the Dave, doesn't matter, you still have to give it a listen because it's really a very special DAC amp combo and DAC. Anyway, at CanJam, you'll be able to listen to the Chord Mojo and the Chord Dave, so make sure to do so. Fostex will also have products on exhibit at CanJam Singapore with Eng Siang and AV1. I haven't confirmed exactly what they're bringing, but at NAM, Fostex showed three new TR Series Dynamic Studio headphones, each available in either 80 ohm or 250 ohm versions. They're the TR70, TR80, and TR90, which are respectively open back, closed back, and semi open. I believe they're priced at around $200 each. I haven't yet heard these, so I hope they'll be on exhibit at CanJam to listen to. I also expect to see the new Mark III versions of the T20RP, T40RP, and T50RP planar magnetic models. I think the T40RP and the T50RP Mark III models are very good, especially at the price of around $160 each, making them very affordable by typical HeadFi standards. Fostex recently announced a new version of the HPA4 USB DAC amp combo called the Fostex HPA4BL. The BL stands for balanced, and it includes a 4-pin XLR balanced headphone output. We'll be getting the HPA4 BL soon, which I'm definitely looking forward to, since I rarely ever see or hear the HPA4 anymore, ever since Joe, who's behind the camera smiling, stole it for his desktop setup. Anyway, I hope to be able to hear the HPA4 BL at CanJam. Now, the balanced output of the HPA4 BL is well-timed for the recent update of one of my favorite dynamic headphones of all time, the Fostex TH900. The new Fostex TH900 Mark II now comes with a new removable headphone cable configuration. It comes with an unbalanced cable terminated with a quarter-inch stereo plug, but is optionally available with a balanced cable. Then I love that I can now, here's the balanced cable, by the way. 
So you can get it in a balance cable optionally as well. And I love that you can now have the TH900 easily adapted to work with just about any device with custom cables if you want to go that route, but without having to permanently modify the headphone. Look for the gorgeous new Fostex TH900 Mark II at CanJam. Finally, I hope Fostex's flagship planar magnetic headphone, the Fostex TH500RP, will be at CanJam so you can listen to what I think is one of the most underappreciated headphones out there. The TH500RP is what I call a quiet, consistent performer. In other words, it doesn't smack you upside the head with any one particular thing. But extended listening sessions reveal a headphone that does so many things very well, very even-handedly. I think the TH500RP, which can be found easily for under 500 bucks if you shop around, I think it's an underappreciated gem of a headphone, so make sure to also give it a listen at CanJam. Along with Cordon Fostex, at the Eng Siang and AV1 exhibit, you'll be able to listen to products by several other companies. They'll have Odyssey, including the new on-ear Odyssey sign and the flagship Odyssey LCD4. They'll have Fio, so look for Fio's digital audio players, like here's the X3. They'll have the Fio X7 digital audio player, the K5 dockable DAC amp, and other Fio products. RHA will also be there with Eng Siang and AV1. They'll have their full lineup of gorgeous Universal Fit in-ear monitors. We have a couple of them here. And they also represent Parrot, so I hope to be able to hear the new Parrot Zik 3 again there. So I'm hoping that they have the new Zik 3 because it is like brand spanking new. And finally, Eng Siang and AV1 will have products by Wu Audio on exhibit. This is the WA7 by Wu Audio, but I also heard they'll have a prototype of the upcoming Wu Audio WA8 portable tube DAC amp combo. So make sure to stop by their exhibit to hear all that stuff. Do I even need to introduce the digital audio players you see in front of me? Because I think almost anybody that would go to a CanJam probably recognizes these very distinctive players. They've redefined the portable digital audio player market um, over the last few years. Of course, we're talking about Astell and Kern. My current reference player is their flagship AK380. This is the Astell and Kern AK380. I've been using it for a while as a reference. It's sitting in an optional dock for it, and this dock is very cool. If you sit it in the dock, um, it has full-size 4-pin XLR, so you can use the AK380 as a sort of desktop source component. Another cool accessory that you can get for the AK380 is the AK380 amp. It goes right on the back of the AK380 and ups the output power so you can drive more difficult-to-drive headphones. Now this is the ripper that you can use with the AK380, another optional accessory. With it, you can rip CDs directly to the AK380, and if you have a Wi-Fi connection on the AK380, um, it'll pull the data down for the CD that it's ripping as well, and of course it rips it to lossless formats on the AK380. Now one model of AK player we don't have here is the brand new AK320. I've not seen it in person, but I've seen it in photos, and it slots in the line underneath the AK380. It looks gorgeous, but I haven't heard it yet, so I'm really looking forward to hearing the new AK320 at CanJam. At CanJam, you'll be able to listen to headphones developed in a collaboration between Biodynamic and Astell and Kern. This is the Biodynamic Astell and Kern AKT1P. It's essentially a Biodynamic T1 second generation, but in a low impedance version. I love having a version of the T1 second gen that I can use with my portable rigs. This has been out for a while. It's the Biodynamic Astell & Kern AKT5P. It's essentially an Astell & Kern tuned version of the venerable Biodynamic T5P. Now this is very, very cool. This is one of their latest collaborations. It's the Biodynamic Astell & Kern AKT8IE. It is the very first Tesla driver in-ear monitor. And it is designed to be a flagship class universal fit in-ear monitor, and I absolutely love this piece. It has a nice smooth presentation, but still quite detailed, and I can listen to this thing all day. And it's also really comfortable because they develop these really cool tips. They kind of look like Darth Vader's helmet, um, and it has a very, very soft durometer silicone uh, material. And I mean, it's really supple. It goes in my ears very quickly, as fast as my customs, at least as fast as my customs. And they're so comfortable, I can wear them all day. So I love the new Biodynamic Astell & Kern AKT8IE, one of my favorite universal fit in-ear monitors. Recently, we posted a HeadFi TV episode dedicated to the new JH Audio and Astell & Kern Siren Series family of universal fit in-ear monitors. At CanJam, JH Audio and Astell & Kern will be showing the new Siren Series full metal jacket lineup. Now again, all of the new Siren Series models are machined from solid blocks of metal. Also, all of the Siren Series full metal jacket models are now equipped with JH Audio's advanced fourth order crossover design and come with improved, more durable cables and metal plugs and jacks developed by Moon Audio. Now at CanJam, you'll be able to hear all of the new full metal jacket models and you should take the time to listen to all of them if you can. 
However, if your time is limited and you had to pick only one or two to listen to, I'd recommend going with the two models that bookend the lineup. The all-new Rosie, priced at only $899, is the most affordable of the Siren Series Full Metal Jacket family. With six drivers per side, the Rosie reminds me of the more expensive JH Audio JH13 Pro, but with adjustable base. The flagship Layla is also something you should take the time to hear. Priced at $2,499, the 12 drivers per side Layla has the flexibility to go from neutral monitor to bass emphasized monitor and can easily go from studio to stage to coffee house to living room and be among the very best you can obtain at any price in any of those settings. By the way, I've just confirmed that Jerry Harvey will be at CanJam, so take the opportunity to meet Jerry Harvey, an industry legend, at the Astell and Kernan JH Audio Exhibit at CanJam. Biodynamic will be joining us at CanJam Singapore, so make sure to check out their exhibit and their latest Tesla headphones. This T1 might look a little different to you. It's missing its cables, and that's because it now has detachable cables. This is the latest generation T1. It's called the Biodynamic T1. I think it's the second generation. And it's updated not only with detachable cables, but they also updated the damping scheme to give it a more refined sound. So if you already liked the Biodynamic T1, I think you're going to love the T1 second gen because it is the T1 but refined even more. Now this is the DT1770 Pro. It's the most affordable of the Biodynamic Tesla models and it is closed. I really like this. This might be one of my favorite Biodynamic headphones ever because it has a, a, a more fun sound signature but it's not so fun that it's not audiophile friendly. So it's a great headphone to take out and about I love that it has the Tesla driver in it, but that it has a more fun sound signature and that it's closed back and that it's affordable. So look for the DT1770, a very popular headphone on HeadFi already. Uh, check it out at CanJam Singapore. Now this is a Biodynamic T5P. This is the first generation T5P at CES 2016. They were showing an updated version of it. I think it had detachable cables like this T1 second gen, but it also had a new tuning. This is not it. Again, this is the original one, but I'm hoping to hear it again at CanJam Singapore because the new tuning was really nice. It had a more robust bass, a fuller, smoother sound. I really like that update of the T5P. It was actually a substantial sonic update. So I'm looking forward to that. Look for that and probably more at the Biodynamic exhibit at CanJam Singapore. Dita Audio is based in Singapore and they'll be exhibiting at CanJam, which I'm very excited about because their in-ear monitors have been rather popular in the HeadFi community. In fact, their Dita Answer Truth Edition is one of the high-end universal fit in-ear monitors in my rotation. Now, all of their current models are based on the Dita Answer, which uses a single ultra-wide band with 10 millimeter driver per side that Dita describes as ultra-lightweight, ultra-fast, and ultra-rigid. Details differentiate the models with the higher-end models using custom cables developed by longtime cable specialist Van Den Hull. The black edition and gold edition, which we don't yet have here, are suited for use with the 2.5mm balanced outputs from Astell & Kern's portable players, so I'm looking forward to giving those two models a try with my Astell & Kern AK380 at CanJam Singapore. For the last several years, I've been seeing the team from Dita Audio at the Tokyo Headphone Festival, so I'm excited they'll also be joining us at CanJam Singapore. Make sure to stop by Dita Audio's exhibit at CanJam to hear their outstanding high-end in-ear monitors for yourself. You'll be able to listen to Shure's products at CanJam Singapore at the Grand Tech Systems exhibit, and I strongly suggest you stop by and do just that. Know, however, that you may need to wait in a line, especially to listen to this. This is the new flagship from Shure. It's the KSE 1500. It's their new full-range electrostatic in-ear system. Yeah a full range electrostatic in-ear system. Even more amazingly, it's a closed back, isolating in-ear system. That combination of things, a world-class electrostatic headphone with the isolation of a closed in-ear monitor is a remarkable thing. We shot a whole episode of HeadFi TV about the KSE 1500. Please watch it, it's on the channel. And all the praise that I lavished upon it in that episode, I only feel stronger about now after several months with it. It is, in my opinion, perhaps well, it's one of the very best headphones you can buy today, regardless of form factor, regardless of price. It's, to me, it's kind of like Shure's Orpheus. It's just that remarkable, and it took them like eight years to develop. But anyway, listen to this if you can. Now, if you're going to demo the Shure KSE 1500, and if there's a line and you're kind of in a rush, I'd say the safest tip to go for if they have them is the uh, Shure Olive Foam Tip. I've given a lot of demonstrations of the KSE 1500, tried a lot of the tips. These just seem to be the ones that are most consistent. But... Different ears, different tips. If these tips don't work for you, swap them around. But whatever you do at CanJam Singapore, you've got to hear the Shure KSE 1500.
Another product I expect you'll be able to listen to at CanJam Singapore is the new Shure SHA900. This is their new portable DAC amp for driving dynamic headphones. It's rather similar to the KSE 1500's amp unit, but of course that's made to drive this electrostatic earphone, very high voltage. This is made to drive standard dynamic in-ears and over-ears. And it's a wonderful little DAC amp unit. It's very resistant to RFI, um, which is great for portable use because you might use it with your phone. I put my phone right on top of it, somebody calls me, it actually doesn't come through the earphones. Also true of the KC1500, by the way. It has the same 2496 DAC in it and the same four-band parametric EQ. It's great to be able to tailor the sound as needed um, with the Shure SHA900. So very nice. Make sure to check it out at the Grand Tech Systems exhibit. By the way, uh, you see this leather case here. It looks like the KSE 1500 case. This comes with the KSE 1500, but it's optional with the SHA900. But make sure to listen to the SHA900 and the KSE 1500, the Grand Tech Systems exhibit at CanJam Singapore. ALO Audio and Campfire Audio will be at CanJam Singapore, and at every event I've ever been to where they've exhibited, they've had a pretty extensive exhibit. So we're just going to show you a few things that you might be able to see at their exhibit. This is the ALO Audio Continental Dual Mono. It is a tube hybrid portable DAC amp combo. Wonderful portable amp for a tube audio enthusiast. By the way, I'm a tube audio enthusiast. I dig the Continental Dual Mono. This is the Campfire Audio family of in-ears, a unique family of in-ears. Unique, I say, because they each have a driver complement that's almost unrelated to all the others. So it's a really cool approach to a family of in-ears because they're all quite different. This is the Lyra, the Jupiter, and the Orion. Make sure to stop by the Campfire Audio and ALO Audio exhibit at CanJam Singapore to listen to these and I'm sure many other things. Audio Sound will be exhibiting at CanJam, and you can expect them to have some of these exotic in-ears there, and I think they also make over-ear headphones as well. The Obravo in-ears are exotic because they use drivers like AMT drivers. I actually took a picture at the Tokyo Headphone Festival of this miniaturized AMT driver that's in this thing. I'm going to show you a picture of it right now. Pretty amazing stuff. This is actually a planar magnetic in-ear, and it's planar magnetic. I believe it's either, I don't remember if it's a full range planar or if it's a planar dynamic hybrid, but I actually think I prefer the planar one to the AMT one, and as I understand, this one may be a lot less expensive. Anyway, they have some exotic driver in-ears uh, with Obravo, so make sure to check them out at the Audio Sound exhibit. Now, they will also have Lampazator, as I mentioned. Lampazator makes tubed DACs, and I've been reading about them. They're talked about on HeadFi. You may have seen them referred to as Lampazator or Lampies for short, and I've never had a chance to hear one. I would like to go to the Audio Sound exhibit with one of my reference portable rigs and plug in a Lampazator in to hear it as a source in one of my reference portable rigs to, to, to finally hear a Lampazator DAC. If you've been interested in Lampazator or Obravo or any of the other companies that AudioSan will be representing. Make sure to stop by their exhibit at CanJam Singapore. Norman Audio will be at the event representing Kimber Cable, Air Acoustics, and maybe some others. So Kimber Cable at CES last month unveiled a whole new suite of headphone cables um, for a lot of the more popular models of high-end headphones. It's really cool to see Kimber finally moving so dedicatedly into headphone audio. So I'm looking forward to seeing the cables there because we don't have any of them yet here. So check out Kimber at Norman Audio to see what they have available for headphone audio enthusiasts there. Air Acoustics, well, we just did a video on this. This is the Air Acoustics Codex. So check out the episode of HeadFi TV where we cover the Air Acoustics Codex. This is a wonderful, balanced desktop DAC amp combo. Um, it has a really nice, smooth, full-bodied sound. I like using it actually with the Sennheiser HD800. It's a really nice, solid-state choice for the HD800. It runs, I believe, pure Class A. I believe it runs with no negative feedback. Anyway, check out the Air Acoustics Codex in a HeadFi TV episode we did very recently and also at CanJam Singapore. Bluetooth headphone specialist Pendulumic will be at CanJam Singapore. Look for their latest model, the TAC T1. I haven't heard it in production form yet, so I'm looking forward to hearing it at CanJam. They will also have the Stance S1. This model's been out for a couple years, and it is wonderful. This is one of my favorite Bluetooth headphones. I don't believe it does any DSP, and I don't believe it does, well, it doesn't do any active noise canceling. So effectively, this is as close to an audiophile purist Bluetooth headphone as you're going to get, and what a sound signature it has, especially for the money. Wonderful Bluetooth headphone, a lot of latest Bluetooth technology in it. That's the Pendulumic Stance S1. Look for that at CanJam 2. If you're from Singapore, then you're probably familiar with NXT, a new leading lifestyle consumer gadget magazine in Singapore. And we're proud to announce that NXT is CanJam's official media sponsor for CanJam Singapore 2016. They're going to have an exhibit at CanJam. We want to thank them for their support and for the coverage of CanJam in their magazine. So make sure to stop by their exhibit where they'll have copies of their latest issue of NXT. 
AV Intelligence is both an exhibitor and one of the event sponsors. So AV Intelligence, thank you so much for your support of CanJam Singapore 2016. At their exhibit, they'll have products from Ultrasone, 8-Ball, and ACS. I think a lot of people are obviously familiar with Ultrasone. I'm really looking forward to seeing their latest headphones because I don't often get to see their entire line, usually only in Tokyo and in Europe. And so it'll be nice to see at Singapore the full line of Ultrasone headphones so I can reacquaint myself with what they've got. 8-Ball is a brand I'm not familiar with. I think it's a lifestyle brand. I know they make some in-ears, and so I'm looking forward to seeing what 8-Ball has. I mean, if AV Intelligence is carrying them, I imagine they have some interesting products. And ACS Custom is a product that I am familiar with. ACS Customs makes custom in-ear monitors. I've heard of them for a long time, but I've never listened to any of their models. I don't own any ACS Customs. So I hope they have some Universal Fit demos that I can hear at the show. So check out AV Intelligence to hear Ultrasone, 8-Ball, and ACS Customs products. Jomo Audio is going to be exhibiting at the event, and they have their own line of custom in-ear monitors. I'm actually not familiar with any of their models, so I'm curious to see what they have to offer for custom in-ear monitors, what the driver complements are, what the configurations are. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what Jomo Audio has for custom in-ear monitors. Now, they also represent Linum cables by Estron. Now, if you're not familiar with Estron's cables, uh, what they're most known for are these, I don't even know if you can see it on this camera, these are really, really thin, lightweight cables. They're right on this, they're on my Westone ES60s, and when I wear my ES60s with these really light Linum cables, it feels practically like they're wireless. So make sure to check out the Linum cables by Estron at the Jomo Audio Exhibit at CanJam Singapore. Jabin will be at CanJam Singapore, and we are finally on his home turf. No matter where in the world I go, I run into Uncle Wilson from Jabin, so a lot of head fires from all over the world No, Uncle Wilson. But now, finally, we're on their home turf in Singapore. I can't wait to see what they've got, because they usually have a very extensive exhibit. So a few examples of what they'll have, Ultimate Ears. Ultimate Ears, this is their new uh, reference remaster. This is actually my new neutral reference in-ear monitor, replacing the reference monitor before it. I don't know exactly what from UE Jabin will have, but make sure to stop by and check it out for yourself. Snugs will be represented by Jabin at CanJam, and Snugs make silicone custom sleeves. I first ran into them at CanJam London last year, and I just happen to be shopping for silicone custom sleeves for my Shure KSE 1500. Let's see if they have something to help me out there. Low 2 will be at the Jabin exhibit. Low 2 makes high-end portable digital audio players. The, lo the Low 2 Paw Gold and the Low 2 Paw 5000 players are very popular on HeadFi. I've only listened to the Paw Gold very briefly, so I'm looking forward to popping my own music into a Paw Gold there and hearing it again for myself with my own music. Enigma Acoustics will be exhibiting through Jabin, and they have the Enigma Acoustics Dharma D1000. I know a lot of you on HeadFi are familiar with the concept of this. This, if you haven't heard it it's yourself, this is an electrostatic dynamic hybrid. No headphone I've heard that has an electrostatic and dynamic element has merged the two so seamlessly, as seamlessly, as Enigma Acoustics has with the Dharma D1000. This is a fantastic headphone. Make sure to give it a listen at CanJam Singapore. What else will Jabin have? Abyss. Here's the Abyss. Uh, this is the Abyss headphone, very popular, a very high-end headphone, a very expensive headphone, and a very strange design, but a remarkable sounding headphone. This headphone is capable of just projecting amazing physicality and power, so make sure to check out the Abyss at the Jabin exhibit. Orender will be there. Orender makes the Orender Flow, which we reviewed in the HeadFi gift guide, a wonderful portable DAC amp combo that you can put an SSD in to actually hold music so that you don't have to carry a drive and a DAC. Check out the Orender Flow. Check out Orender's full line at the Jabin exhibit. And then Jabin will also have Fittier. So if you're interested in Fittier in-ears, they're kind of hard to get outside of Tokyo, so it's very cool that Jabin will have them there at Singapore. Anyway, those are just a few examples of what Jabin will have at CanJam Singapore. Stereo Electronics will be exhibiting at CanJam Singapore, and they'll be representing Noble, iFi, and Unique Melody. We have here the Noble Savant, a very popular, affordable, and very nice in-ear monitor. Uh, this, on the other end of the price scale, is the Noble Prestige. This is one of their flagship custom in-ears, and the craftsmanship on it is unbelievable. The craftsmanship and the art pieces that they make are remarkable. And thankfully, this sounds as good as it looks. The K10 is a beautiful, it's based on the K10. Uh, the K10 Prestige sounds absolutely gorgeous. Make sure to check out the full line of Noble in-ears, as well as their new K10 Universal, their aluminum K10 Universal at CanJam Singapore at the Stereo Electronics exhibit. iFi will also be represented by Stereo Electronics. We have several iFi products here. iFi has such a great 
family of accessories. Uh, you can do USB conditioning. Um, they have super powerful portable DAC amp combos and they have desktop products as well. Check out the iFi line, very thorough, cool line of products. And then Unique Melody with their custom in-ear monitors and I think they also make universal fit in-ear monitors. But check out Unique Melody at Stereo Electronics at CanJam Singapore as well. Soundwave will be representing Master and Dynamic and Fender at CanJam Singapore. And if you can't tell, I'm a big fan of Master and Dynamic headphones. For an on-the-go headphone, they sound fantastic, but they also look amazing. I love the way they look, and I love the way they're built. Forged aluminum, stainless steel, and just the styling. This is a limited edition Proenza Schooler model that I just absolutely had to have. I love that model. Um, but look for Master and Dynamic at Soundwave's exhibit at CanJam Singapore. They'll also be representing Fender. So Orisonics was just recently picked up, I mean acquired entirely by Fender. Um, we reported on it at headfi.org on the forums and they'll have the Fender in-ears there I believe. So check it out, we have a couple of models here um, and make sure to listen to the Fender in-ears. Of course, the roots of the Fender in-ears are Orisonics, but these are new models. So make sure to check out Fender and Master Dynamic at Soundwave at CanJam Singapore. As many things as we just covered, that's still just a small sampling of all the things you'll be able to hear, experience, listen to at CanJam Singapore. Again, February 20th and 21st, 2016 at the Pan Pacific Singapore Marina Square. So again, Singapore is just one of the most exciting, most vibrant, most important communities for personal audio on this entire earth. So we cannot wait to have our first Can Jam there very, very soon. Now, we weren't able to talk about all the companies that will be represented there in this video. We just didn't have the time. So right now, we'll start showing you a list of all the companies we know that will be represented at Can Jam Singapore at the time of the shooting. So anyway, we'll see you very soon. Halfway around the world for us. We cannot wait to get there. Can Jam Singapore 2016.